there because okay. I actually have one scheduled for this afternoon with a group awesome. of people here locally, uh -huh. and um, we're you know everyone has questions about how it works and what the public is going to see, how the public can interact, things like that. Okay, so um, I'm going to jump in with the basics first, and then we'll go to the questions. Is that cool? Is everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. Hello, Simon. Hello. Who's that? I don't see a name. The name disappeared. Who's the butt? That's Melissa. You joined us twice? How did you do that? And and one of them is just with a still picture. Yeah. Uh, there we go. We have more coming. There's Melissa R again. I'm going to, are you, can you hear us okay? Are you stuck there? Simon, can you hear us? Okay. Oh. I'm, I can't hear you. <laughs> can't hear Simon. No, now I can. Can you hear me now? There yes. you are. Bravo. All right. Okay. Melissa is down. I don't know where she's going here. Melissa's multiplying. It's fantastic. Yeah. This is uh, a cloning. <laughs> yeah, it's best. And I don't hear her. So I'm assuming that you can hear us, Melissa, but I don't want to get started until, since this was all your, your questioning that uh, we wanted to go ahead and get started with. A little radio silence still. <laughs> Simon, how comfortable are you with Google Plus while we're waiting on Melissa to catch up and get, uh, get going? I don't know what's, uh, what's going on over there. Uh, Google Plus. I, to be very honest, I haven't used Google Plus a hell of a lot. Um, I've used Google Plus more for clients than for myself. Um, I think I talked about this last week, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, but but a lot of the Google Plus stuff is really just republishing or, or, or publishing in a different form, the same content, and don't really use it a lot for uh, social media stuff uh, as yet. So. Um, you know, I wouldn't say that I'm a master at it at all, and I, I actually do have the full intention of. Yay! Look at there. Coming so. Drug and plug. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, I, yeah, it's it's a little bit. You know, I'm a little bit haphazard with it. Yeah, to be very honest. Okay. Uh, so we want to ace it today, then. Yep, that's that's the intention. Yeah. Okay, Melissa, I don't, I, I'm, I don't know if you can hear me or not, since um, I see three of you and I don't hear you. I'm going to assume that you have your mute button in the top right-hand corner of your screen pushed. Um, you'll want to unmute that microphone. See the little microphone up there? And if you don't want your camera on, leave it x out. There's her camera. I see her face now. Can you hear us? It seems, it seems that she has a frozen connection. Yeah, and maybe going. that's what's uh, going on and stopping her from... Can you hear us, Melissa? Hello? There. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> oh, my goodness, I'm so sorry. You are absolutely fine. Okay, now, did you find the microphone? Is that what was stopping your, your um, sound? No, I think it's... Um, I'm turning off the camera because I don't have, I don't think, enough bandwidth. Uh-huh. And so, but I kept getting dropped over and over again. I have no idea. Okay. And then so you it weren't went, really pushing anything. It just was sort of kicking you out. Yep. Okay. All right. So, um, everybody seems to be dancing now. I see Greg flipping to his uh, still to his uh, profile. Yeah, I was just trying off. out the, the turn camera off. Oh yeah, you can do that too. Um, uh, let's uh, let's start with the basics of the Google Plus. And Melissa, since you were like, you know, in the bottom. Yeah. Bro, just introduction. I'm not belittling you or anything. I just want to tell everybody why I'm starting from zero. Um, okay. Google Plus is like the editor of the biggest magazine in the world, and it tells, um, it lets everybody see your content based on, you know, how, you know, wonderful they think you are. Okay. So Google Plus, when nobody liked it, was basically a way, um, even if you didn't use it, then just to get your content online. So using Google+, Plus, even if you only come in and post links to your content, is a positive thing for your, for your business. Um, you know, I, don't think, I think now that since they've introduced the communities, that's probably really, you know, not, that's 
the communities is the better part of it for me. I mean, the ghost, it was a ghost town before, but since uh, the Brave Group kind of got in on the community and we, like, blew it up and, and just did some amazing stuff over there with sharing and, and whatever, it's become more of a more of a home for me. I just wish they had more sharing, like um, Facebook and Twitter. I mean, you can share everything to Facebook and Twitter, but Google Plus tends, tends to be still a hassle to do it. So from the beginning, I want you to, um, you don't have anything on your profile either. Is that correct? I, your profile I don't. is blank. It is blank. Okay, we are going to unblank your profile. Or we're gonna oh, no. Kind of unblank your profile as soon as I can pull mine up. I made this screenshot, and um, as soon as I can see how to share your screen with you, share screen, screen share. Okay. Okay, that's my hangout. You don't need to see that. There you go. Can you see my screen? I cannot. You cannot. It says screen share. Let's see. Oh, there you are. Okay. You can see it? Yeah. Okay. I know how corny that warrior woman is, but anyway, we're going to ignore it. But you want to put like <laughs> some sort of brand image there. And um, Simon, I haven't looked at your profile to know if you've got one up there. Do you have a, a brand image of any kind up there? No, I don't. Um, it, I, I, from memory, I've just got, uh, <laughs> I don't even know what's on my profile. Uh, I've, I've just got a uh, you know, basic comment of you know, what I do and uh, so forth. I'll actually have to have a look. I, you know what? I'm going to have to find your profiles too, um, and so but yeah, that's your that's your good real estate there. And mine is not exactly made good use of because you know the words are on the wrong side. But this was made just out of uh, a a joke, I guess. I um, so but I I like to pose, and I thought it was kind of indicative of my attitude. So I stuck it up there. So you want some sort of image up here, and it's going to be different from Facebook, and you can use anything and if you don't want to create something you can download um, images from stock photos and all that kind of thing but you know jazz it up a little bit and make it yours um, but you want to stick your face in the corner not necessarily like the one I have up here um, <laughs> but I mean just so that everybody what, do, what is your business goal for? Um, I'm actually right now I'm a grad student so and I'm working on a project I'm in kind of um, the nonprofit world as uh -huh. far as like community outreach community engagement so um, so I'm in uh, my final year and working on my thesis on my thesis uh -huh. so I'm trying to kind of uh, be proactive and learn some of this because I just think that uh, I'm I'm discovering that these tools are really they're helpful, and um, it's really just for me again the idea of interacting and engagement. So I'm not selling anything necessarily. Okay, so then you can next what I had to say about brand image. Okay. <laughs> you can put oh. whatever you feel like up there. Um, but you're with your grad student, um, and you're you're wanting to eventually make steps towards nonprofit, whatever, and you're wanting to plant seeds for yourself at least for what you may want to do down the road. Um, you you wouldn't want to stick. You could stick some tagline and they've had student out to change the world, whatever. Um, for Simon and and Greg and I, uh, our tagline should have our keywords in there. Mine is power writing or writing rather. Um, I probably should have freelancer in there somewhere. And uh, the introduction just tells everybody who you are. Um, what is Melissa going to do with her nonprofit education? Uh, well, that didn't sound right. Um, with her with her grad thesis when she's out and you know just it's just a way to introduce yourself so since you are not concerned about the brand image and stuff um, I'll skip over this because you know you and I would say I mean again I don't want to have um, Greg or Simon I don't want to like take up your time with things that you're already fully aware of um, unless you think that this will be you know productive for everybody in the future um, I just want to make sure to be considerate of your all your time as well. So uh, that, that's fine for me. Yeah, I'm, inter I'm interested in hearing uh, someone else's uh, high level explanation of Google Plus because people ask me what I think it is pretty frequently. Oh, good. Okay, I just wanted to check in. That's all. And it's also yeah. it's also good. It's good for me to to hear what you know your approach to it is or what your questions are because you know I, I you know I don't specialize in helping people with Google Plus, but I. I often help people with social media stuff, so it's interesting to hear what you ask and how you 
uh, what sort of uh, issues you might have or, or what sort of needs you might have for it. So far away, it's really interesting. Okay. And, and Tanya, are, are we all supposed to be seeing your screen now? Because I'm still seeing your camera. Oh, you are? Yeah. Uh, I don't. I click screen share. Let me try and see what I did. Uh, screen share. This way, yeah, I was going to say. Oh, so you, there we go. Desktop. How about that? Maybe that works. Select a window. Yeah, share. you have to pick a window. There we go. Now I see it. Okay. I see. I have no idea. What is that? Huh. Wow, that's incredibly technical. <laughs> yeah, that, that's uh, that's Simon's screen. How did that go here? Let me see. Yeah. Whoa. Minister, I was going to suggest that perhaps you connect with Andy um, because he's into nonprofit uh, work. So it sounds a little bit similar to what you're doing. In fact, and he's on he's on the Brave Group. Um, okay. Yeah, that would Andy, be great. I can't remember Andy's last name. Andy, but, uh, Andy was with. That's right. Yeah, he was with us last week. Maybe he was talking about. Uh, yeah, he's he lit a fire under him, or we lit a fire under him. We all lit a fire under him last week. Yeah, he did so some, he did some great stuff, stuff this week. Yeah. Yeah. That's so great. Yeah. Um, so if you want to, okay. So Greg, since our and Simon, do you want me to continue with the brand stuff? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Sure. All right. So I'll we'll move through this. The introduction is sort of self-explanatory, but you know, kind of be jazzy about it. Um, show your personality. Um, the bragging right, the bragging rights is where it can get interesting because I read uh, last week that uh, you can drop names in your bragging rights or in your introduction, either one. Um, like Chris Brogan, you know, you're completing the Brave New Year course or whatever. And when you put their name, or I have ProBlogger in mine, um, and I didn't know it at the time when I did this, but it sort of puts you further into the radar, so to speak. Um, Google sort of picks you up along with them when it picks up stuff about these people. Now, granted, it's not going to put you on page one or anything doing that because, you know, there's nine million other pages in front of you, but it helps out, and every little bit helps when you're trying to get seen online. Um, the occupation, try to be as specific as you can. Don't skip over it. Don't uh, don't jazz it up. That's where you want outright um uh, six-year-old language articulation right there and I've got my Google voice number in there um, you can use your own phone number in that if you want um, but I have a lot of like I don't know 18 year old boys circling me so <laughs> I'm not putting my phone number on there um, and what is the number that you do you have on there you said I have my Google voice number um, you can get a free Google voice number because you've got a Google account you can get a free Google Voice, and when someone calls you, or when someone requests your number, or if you want to put it on a profile, you use that number, and it will go straight to a voicemail. It will answer. It will say, "You have reached the Google Voice of blah blah blah," and um, you can then do, you know, choose to call them back, or you know, <coughs> if you're expecting a call from a client, you, I would let them know though that that is your Google Voice. That's not your phone number, so that they're not, you know, taken off guard um, or whatever. Cool. Uh, be sure and list all the websites that you contribute to um, on your profile. Again, that spreads out your footprint a little further and go all the way down. And don't forget to include, um, I've got Contently on mine. I don't know if Simon uses Contently. Uh, Greg, no. you may. I don't know. Um, no, I don't. You don't. Uh, Contently is uh, more of a writer and designer platform, I think. Um, but I haven't had any luck with using it, but I still have my stuff up there. Um, and again, this contributor to, if you've gotten guest posts, um, you know, listed on other sites, uh, like I've got here with Blogger and Firepole and whatever, um, list them on there because that spreads out your footprint also. Okay. Yeah, those, those contributor links are, are required if you're going to uh, have Google authorship uh, allow your, your, what you post to show up in Google search results. That's huh. true. Um, that... Uh, and that was one of the things I wanted to talk about, but I am really, really um, not efficient when it comes to the Google authorship. I stumbled my way through it, and I'm still not sure that I did it right. So I'm going to, if you know how to do that, Greg, I'll let you explain how to do that. Um, well, it, it, there has to be a, a two-way connection uh, uh -huh. so to the site that, that you're contributing to. So 
it, right here in this location is where you make the outbound connection. Right. And on the uh, on the other side, if it's a WordPress site, it's pretty easy. There, there's numerous plugins that you can uh, you can just look up Google Authorship, and it will put the the proper tag in the the heading of of your content to uh, to link back to um, to your Google profile page. No, I know page. that Studio Press does that. I didn't know that other that there were other plugins out there for it. I know Studio yeah, Press, Studio Press yeah. has it built in. Yeah. yeah. If you if you just look on the on the plugins, there are a number of uh, ones you can get freebies. And I think before the plugins came out, when they first started doing this, was when I started trying to figure mine out. So if you, they made it a lot easier by doing that. Yeah, they did. Um. Okay. So you you know now how to get your image up there. How to get um how to optimize your profile to make it you know more searchable and more findable. Findable is a good word. Right, um, and now we want to talk about circling people because um, when you join Google Plus, you will have lots and lots of people start to circle you, and you know, I think you said in your post that you were just circling them back because it's the right thing to do, and that is polite, but it's going to fill your stream with stuff you don't need and people you don't know. Uh -huh. um, from a business standpoint, we wouldn't want to do that because um, they're not part of your ideal readership. I am not writing for 18-year-olds, and they're not part of my ideal readership. So I'm not, I don't circle them back. Um, no offense, and they might be wonderful, but another thing is if they don't speak English, there's also another reason not to put them in your stream. Okay. Um, so you have to sort of set up categories for yourself and I want to do I think I need to change my screen now so I turned it off I want to turn it back to my can I ask a question sure absolutely um, so a couple questions um, as far as the the circling so say in this case here we are in the brave group and doing this whole thing then when the brave group is over does everybody go away or no, no, no. They're, they will still be listed in your Brave group because until you take us out. Okay. When you take us out, then um, then we yeah. won't be privy to see, to see whatever is shared with the, with the Brave group. Your Brave group may not be the same as my Brave group because the circling, I created a circle for myself. And so when somebody adds me or when I add them back, um, I can decide to put them in the brave circle or I can decide to add them to writers or designers or whatever. So you can make the you can circle them however you want. So if you wanted to um oh she disappeared. <laughs> Did you catch it? Can't hear you. Microphone. Goodness. There you are. Okay, I'm turning oh, the there camera. You now you have your camera and your voice. Yay! Oh. <laughs> oh. You spoke too soon. <laughs> wow. Is it just because I'm living in the sticks, or do I just have horrible internet service? I don't know what's I'm going on. I'm not sure. Are you not on broadband? Uh, I have a modem. I am <laughs> using wireless. <laughs> I don't know. Like, how, how, how horrible is your internet service? <laughs> well, it's. I'm kind of in the sticks a little bit. I can don't know play, what the... Can you play YouTube videos? On occasion. On occasion. Okay. okay, so it's your connection then, I guess. Okay, sorry about that. I'll keep trying. No, 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 you're fine. But <laughs> what I wanted to know is did you catch the answer about circling? Or did you... Um, the, what I caught was that you said that you may have a different circle than I do. And then, okay. and then, I, and then I got lost. Yeah, I got dropped. Okay. So when somebody sends you an ad, if it's somebody that you know is from the Brave group, then you circle. You can circle them with the Brave group, or you can circle them however you want. Um, okay. You and as far as I know, um, when Chris Rogan set this up, he set it up so that we are in the Brave group for life. I think. Oh, cool. Yeah. So you'll get your eight lessons, but we're here just to aggravate each other and and you know push each other to the brink of insanity. Until we all do what we want to do, so perfect. Um, grave. <laughs> so we're we're all here. Yeah. And, so uh, here's yeah. another question. You say eight lessons, and so this was another question I had. Where on the um, stream there would be like, okay, B N or whatever, B N Y O eight. 
and uh -huh. then there would be a conversation, and I didn't know what BN08 was, and I don't know if that's part of a previous um, course. So BN08, that's the last lesson. That means you should have gotten one through seven before that. Okay, because there was somebody just commenting on that again in the Brave group that I just wasn't familiar with. So, okay, um, he sends he sends those out from the time you join every seven days. Um, so after eight weeks of being part of the group, you should uh -huh. have gotten BN08. Okay. So that you won't get anything else. I don't know if um, he's planning on adding more content or anything like that. Okay, I just said after I just, that BN08, it's just you know, I guess it's just uh, us, you know. Uh, instigating each other. Sure. No, I think that's good. But, but the way I understand is that there, there are people who have already got the N08 because they started before. Yeah. Uh, you know, ah, for example, there are people who have got it already. I haven't got it yet because I'm, I'm only in about the fifth or sixth week. Okay, so, so you've only got a couple more weeks left. I've yeah. already gotten BN08. I don't know when I got BN08. It was like, and you're still here. This is a good thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> you guys are stuck. <laughs> um, that's great. Okay. So the so the as far as the brave new, new year goes, when that eight weeks is up, you will not have the circle disappear from your Google Plus or anything like that. Um, and you can choose to uh, share things uh, with only the brave group, and you can do it from your mainstream in your um, in your feed. When you click on that little share thing, and I've got a thing of it somewhere. Let me find an image, a screenshot, if I can find it. Right and then, here. did I click it? No, I close it. Smart. All right. And then, Chris, you mentioned that you say that you have a circle of people of people that you don't know. Yeah. If somebody adds me, what I'll do is I I have one that I call um I just called it added me and I'll put them <laughs> in there and then when I get some downtime I'll sort through it and I'll look at a couple of things. I'll look to see how far of an impact they have. I'm looking at target market to see if it lines up with, um, you know, who, who I am and what I'm about, and to see if that might be a potential uh, uh, person that might share the materials that I put out, or I might have some really interesting stuff that I'd like to um, to call through. So I use that in that way, and then if it doesn't work, I just drop them by unchecking the box next to their name. Okay. Very good. Chris is safer than I am. I just stick them somewhere or I don't. <laughs> I'll go and check, I will go out and go and check out the profile and see, um, see, you know, if it looks like they're in my target audience. That, that's actually a really good, really good uh, approach, uh, Chris, because uh, uh, you know, I often do, I mean, on Twitter, you're always like, you disconnect with somebody, like three weeks later, you think, oh my God, I really need this guy, what was his name? And you spend hours, you know, trying to find the guy on these he's disappeared. So having a, an, you know, an open box or an added me box uh, circle is a really great idea. Yeah. So I'm in the added box because I don't even have a profile. Uh, no profile. We have to, but we're going to fix that after this is done. So, um, but the, and if you didn't have a, and see, if you had, if I had not seen your name in the Brave group, I would not have put you in the Brave ones because you don't, because you have a blank profile. So, you disappeared again. Okay. There you are. It seems like whenever someone gets added, I get dropped for some reason. I have to work on that. But um, anyway, I was just saying that, yeah, I don't have a profile. And actually, I added you, Chris, because you are in New Mexico. And I'm in Durango. And I thought, oh, this is so cool. But again, this is just me being the newbie. Not well, knowing what I'm doing, so <laughs> we have to start somewhere. Thank you, thank somewhere. you. No, so. It's all good. Um, and if you can see this screen thing now, the screen share, um, there is a the the little public square down there. You can take it off altogether, and you can share with just one person. You can share with an entire circle, or you can um, make it public. But you can limit it how you want. But what you have to be aware of is if you share it with somebody else. Um, they will still be able to share it with other people. So there is a privacy issue thing there. You can't, it won't be just for them and then they can't do anything with it, kind of like Facebook. Um, so 
Um, if you if you want it really to be private, then I probably would consider not sharing it on Google Plus because you never know what's going to happen beyond the person that you shared it with. Um, but that little X in the box, you can take it off and, and add whoever's name you want. Um, and you don't have to add a comment at the top where it says add comment. You can just share straight the way it is. Um, but do you have any other questions about sharing? Well, I had a question in regards to um, there's this thing called locked or limited. Yes. So when I first got on with this group, um, it would show up in my little comment box. Okay. When you um, when we share stuff within the Brave group, because that's a private community and it's mm -hmm. only for Brave New Year um, members, you can't share it with outside of that. Now this is different. What I was sharing sharing you is from a uh, public stream, but if I were sharing something from the Brave group, you, I can't go outside of the Brave group. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why it popped up, and I don't. I can't remember where I was. So. I wish I could give you more information. And then I clicked on it, and then it was locked, and then I couldn't unlock it. Oh, so like it was it was unlocked, and then you locked it? Kind of thing? From what I can remember, yeah, it was an option, and so I was doing the trial and error thing. And, uh, yeah, do, do, you, uh, do you know offhand what the difference is between disable comments and lock this post? That should be the same thing. No, disable content. Yeah, that should be the same thing. If it's locked, then nobody should be able to um, to comment on it. Comment on it. Okay. Hmm. Let me see if I can find. Because <clears throat> it, because it, they're they're two separate things. On okay, so maybe what that means is hold on. Let me pull up one. Do you have a Do you have a link to one that you have? No, I was just um, I was just checking that drop down on one of my own posts, and and I've got three options, delete this post, disable comments, and lock this post. Okay, let me see. So, uh, let's see. I have a different... Thing. I have removed this post, report, abuse, and band member. I don't have... Um, let me try something. Okay. I just shared that in the thing just to see what happened. Uh, okay, it's not letting me do it. Because there we are. Edit, delete, disable, unlock this post. So this po this post is locked. Hmm. That's very curious. I will I'll check on that and get I'll you an I'll answer. See I, I'll see if I can find an answer to that. Yeah, I'll um see what I can what I can find out too. That's interesting. I've never tried to use it, so I never um I never worried about it. Uh, I do know that you can't um, mention people in Brave New Year group posts that are not in the group. You can mention others that are in the group, but you can't mention people that are not. Uh, okay, I just got an, I, I just looked it up in the help files and it when you lock the post it prevents other people from resharing. So it, it does have that okay. functionality like Facebook does. Okay. So it kind of makes it private. Right. Okay. That works. So disable comment obviously is um, Self-explanatory. All right. So I'll stuck in here. I don't know when you. I, I just. I saw another body appear down there, and I just now realized that that was you. Yeah. Well, I'm, thank you. I, I had to uh, get in through Firefox. My Google uh, Chrome browser just was hung up on cookies, so. Oh. I went through the back door and. Uh, <laughs> Glad to join you guys. Thank you for joining us. Do you have any particular <laughs> questions about Google Plus and, and the way uh, things are working over here? I'm obviously not an expert. I did lay that on the table earlier, um, but I want to help however I can. I so really appreciate it. Uh, I'm, I am really very new to uh, Google Plus. Um, I have a couple of questions that have come up in the last day or so as I've come along. And since I, since Chris was kind enough to walk me through at least getting into the Brave group. Now I see there are 93 users and I would like to add them into my circles as I've created a circle BNY and I've, I, I am only seeming to be able to add them if I go one at a time. Is there a way to, to add a group circle? That's an excellent question and I have a screen share for that. If you will hang on one second and let me pull that up. And it's not on the screen. Hold on one second. Thank you guys for your patience. 
fabulous. Thing. There is a way that you can add a whole slew of people, I think, at one time. And it is, pull that up. Now I'm going to pull you guys back up. Oh, wrong one. Now I'm going to screen share. I had everything open and organized. Then I closed it. There we go. All right. Can you see my screen now? Yeah. Okay. Um, you can drag these people into the box. Is that how you were doing it? Dragging them down uh, into a box? I was actually on my iPad last night. And I, oh. In fact, I couldn't even connect you to Hangout with my iPad either. I'm not sure what was up with that. But I have not seen this screen yet. But okay. so you could just can you select the people in uh, multiple selections then and add and drag them to a circle? Is, is that what you're saying? You should. Um, it should be easier than like clicking and adding. Let me go to mine and see if you can do um, do the, that way. Circles. Okay. Now I'm gonna shift. Right. No. I think you can only do it at one time. Fine. I mean, do them one at a time. But it's faster sliding them into the circle than it is um, clicking through the arrows and saving. And let me see. Brave ones. Let's pull this up. Okay. It says drag people to your circles, follow, and share. They're already there. Yep. One person at a time is all I see. Now, if you're doing it on an iPad, too, I'm. I really don't have any expertise with the iPad um, on that using the circles. Okay, I have another question for you too. So I, I have been fooling around with assigning somebody an acquaintance or a brave new world or, or following. Now when you change those settings, the the person who you're you're circling can't see that you change them from friend to acquaintance to uh, no. They no, can. they can't see that. So you can do that with uh, however you want and not worry about offending somebody or anyone. right. You're not going to step on anybody's toes. I um, uh, I think uh, I did this the other day. I had somebody in my um, I had accidentally put them in my Brave New Year circle. I don't know how I did that. Um, and so they got the the invitation to the thing, and I was like, oh, wait a minute. And so I just slid them right out and put them in. And there's no notification sent and said, you know, um, that so-and-so has moved you from this to that. So, na 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 <laughs> You just got booted down. <laughs> no. Um, but uh, Chris is saying that you can quickly add people in the BNY group. Um, I'm assuming that you're going into the group setting, um, Chris, to do that, right? Yeah, let me show you really quickly, if you don't mind. Sure. I'll just go ahead and share my screen, too. Um, Start screen share. Uh, can you see the Brave New Year group? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're on there, um, go over there too. if you go over to the member section and you hover, you'll see view all. If you click the view all button, all of the people will come up and it'll show you the circles um, that you have. And you can add to a circle if by hovering over it. And you can see all of my very, uh, various lists here. Um, but, you know, you can add to Brave New Year if you've already created a circle for that. And it's just, you can go all the way down the line and just keep adding people in very, very rapidly. That would be a better, that would be a good way to make sure that you get everybody in the group if you're interested in having everybody that's in the group uh, there. Um, so I didn't, I actually hadn't tried it that way. So it's thank really you. Fast. So I like that. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's more thorough that way. Um, so about the, the sharing and circling, um, do you have any other questions, Melissa? Um, no, I think I'm, this has been good. It's just been really helpful as far as how it works. And I'm, I guess for me, I'm just really curious about um, just the etiquette. You know, like in my post, I'm, there seems to be, there are just certain things like do's and don'ts is what I call it, which is... Um, taking from like, you know, back in the day, the glamour do, glamour don't. It's like there are just certain things that maybe you just maybe aren't supposed to do, but you don't know and nobody's really written about it or talked about it. You just kind of maybe learn by trial and error. And so I was just wanting to know more um, some of the etiquette stuff too, you know. So the circling was one or do you keep your bio pretty brief? And you were sharing with me about how it works and um, – 
I'll have to learn more about the Google authorship and I'm not there yet but um, you know also things like um, on your home page I notice there's this what's hot and recommended and I'm curious to know uh, how can I customize that so I don't I might not be interested in some of the things that are currently recommended is there some kind of a, a customization bar that allows me to actually maybe tap into the things that I actually might enjoy and appreciate versus what seems to be almost kind of spam like to me I guess uh, let me find one about that but while I'm because I saw those uh, too I just ignore them because I don't spend a lot of time in here anyway unless I'm going to the break group um, and well there's that's the hangout I don't know that there's a here this is what's hot and recommended this post is, this is based on what you flip through on Google this is also based on what everybody else is sharing um, it says you can click on the Google Explore Google Plus Explore page if you go to one of those things that says Google Plus Explore and what's hot and you can adjust what shows up there's a little slider up at the top um, let me go and let me find let me get you a screenshot of that oh I went out. I would go there but I'm afraid I'm gonna get dropped so okay I'm, I'm gonna I want to just uh, find one and, and share it with you well no that will take me too long okay and then again it I mean it's just I didn't know if that was something that is just kind of like common knowledge where there are little like there's a pop-up that you can pick and well, choose. Well, I think it will always show to some extent. It will always show some what's hot um, content because you know that's what they're doing is they're trying to spread uh, content and whatever. But um, you can you can adjust how much of it you see. There's a little when you see one of those what's hot and what's recommended. There's a little question mark in the top right hand corner. If you click on that it will tell you you can control how much you see um, and you just click on the link inside that box when you click on that link it will take you to another box and that one has a slider and it's automatically set um, a little bit further than half so you have a little more frequency of those things slide it all the way to the left and you should have very minimal what's hot and what's recommended kind of things but um, like I said that's based on what they share is based on what you have shared through your Google stream plus what um, other people are sharing um, huh. the kind of they just kind of assume that you really want to see that <laughs> okay <laughs> so, um, but if you want to decrease the frequency of how much of it that you're seeing you'll have to travel through the the links to get there to that slider okay okay Thank you. Um, as far as the etiquette goes really the biggest etiquette is just you know treat people the way you want to be treated it's not much different than you know what you learned in in kindergarten and um, you just uh, you just kind of have to be helpful I mean you don't have to be you really don't have to be but um, when you're helpful to other people they're helpful to you and it sort of helps your business but you haven't gotten there yet <laughs> you're <still a> baby. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, when you're but when you're ready for your Google Plus education for business and whatever you know um, there's a lot of really good information in um, Chris's book um, and that you can check out but the, the basics of the etiquette is, you know keep your minimum your swearing to the minimum if it's not part of your brand and um, if it is I don't know I guess they'll just block you if they don't want to see it and uh, and just uh, be nice there's nothing really and and just keep private what's private and I know like in the stream when somebody shares something and I want to share it it will say okay this has been shared with a limited audience I don't go ahead and share it um, some people can you can and it's you know possible but I mean for me that person said you know hey I only wanted a, these few people to see it so you know I'm just gonna I'm gonna respect their wishes and not share it beyond that unless I talk to them and they say oh yeah you can share that so okay Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no. You're welcome. Any anything else um Saul or Simon or Greg, Chris? I have uh, another question for you. Mhm. Mm may. And um how do you I noticed when I was trying to get connected today that you can I could I was listening for a while through YouTube. There's a little box that opens up in Google Plus uh which is streaming through YouTube. Mm -hmm. So, I can't interact that way, but I could listen. So, how did how did you do that? That is an on-air feature. When you um, start a uh, Google Plus Hangout, and this might have something to do with uh, what Greg is going to want to ask, as uh, wanting to know too, since he's got businesses asking about it, um, you can make your 
Hangout public by choosing the on-air option. Choosing on-air streams it to YouTube and records it at the same time. No, is okay, that so if you don't want everybody to see it, don't click that on-air button. So then that's a publicly searchable YouTube video. Yes. Then. Yes. And it will go it will be um, saved to the um, to the user that started the hangout. I got gotcha. you. I know Johnny B. Truant and uh, Sean uh, Platt, those guys do that for uh, the self-publishing podcast. And, uh, and the Better uh, Off Undead show. Yes, yes. And uh, so this is great to be checking this out, uh, finally seeing how they do that. Yep, this is how they do it. And I think Johnny um, also, I think he goes back and does some editing and puts an intro and an outro behind it. I'm not sure. I think he did. I haven't seen it in a while, so... Um, or no, he starts it inside the, that's what he does. He starts it inside. I forget. I remember now. Um, he starts music to get his brand thing going. You know, I'm not that technically, uh, inclined. <laughs> so, um, but it, I, th I suppose that you could uh, delete it after, you, after it's been recorded, you should be able to make it private. I see. So if you didn't want somebody to see it, but you know, they can find you if, if you're streaming live, but and after that you, you can, uh, you should be able to take it down if you want. I see. And uh, I've got tons of questions. I don't want to uh, go right ahead. Your uh, your time, and uh, again, I appreciate you taking the time to do this. How I'll do, do how do you make the uh, the the speaker like Chris just um, is appearing? And um, is that the the moderator of the the hangout? Is that the one who controls who gets you know or how the the, the featured screen is? How does that work? Whoever's talking. Whoever's talking. It, it picks up on whoever's talking. It's like when you start, you will be the, the feature. Uh, it does it automatically. I see. Yes. That being said, um, I was on a webinar the other night with uh, Chris Brogan and um, Rob Hatch, and Chris was flipping the screen. I don't, it was a Google Plus um, webinar, but it was done through GoToMeeting. So when it was aired through GoToMeeting, I think that that must have somehow given, given him some control over flipping the screen. Um, wait a minute. Let me see. Maybe this does. Hold on. Default device, default device, play to sound on. Auto detect connection speed, voice. Okay. I was looking in the um, settings to see if um, there was some way that you can manually switch it. I, th I think if, if you, because you're the moderator of the event, if you actually click on the screen that you want to appear, I think um, from memory that's how it works. You can actually flip. So I, mean, I can't do it because I'm not the moderator, but if you click on my, 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 my image, for example. Yeah, I just did it. And I don't know if the other people just saw me. I mean, I'm, no, I'm talking, just, so I'm going to switch back. It's, it switched back to Tanya when she was speaking. Okay, so so if I'm talking and and say Tanya uh, clicks on Greg, let's see if Greg uh, pops up while I'm talking. So I'll just keep talking. There you and, go. Uh, yeah. Does did Greg come up? Um, yeah. Yeah. So only, there you go. Yeah, but it was only on your screen. It, that that's an indiv that feature is individual to whoever does the clicking. So I can I can click on Chris, and make him the only. Uh -huh. And prevent it to, from switching to anybody else. And yeah. then if I click on him again, it goes back to whoever's speaking. Right. So, okay. uh, but but the moderator doesn't can't override that. You? No, it doesn't doesn't seem that way. Although I think the moderator can uh, boot people out of the session. Yeah. Um, there's an eject button there. Um, I watched Chris actually. He was like, "Oh, sorry, I forgot to flip to Rob." Sorry, didn't mean to leave the camera on me kind of thing. I mean, he was actually, I mean, he had verbalized that he had not flipped the camera over to somebody. And like I said, um, it was done through GoToMeeting, and I don't know if that had something to do with it because I was under the impression that it's strictly, you know, it's on your mic. It just depends on who's talking. Let's see, there's Greg. He's not talking. Who did that? I have another question, if I may. Sure. Uh, I have noticed that my... Gmail inbox is rapidly proliferating with notifications. <laughs> I assume that most people like to turn that turn that notification thing off. So that you or how do you guys work that? Does that? I leave the notifications off, I but do. I still get the red box saying that somebody's posted in the you know posted to my whatever or mentioned or whatever. What about you guys? 
I do the same thing. And you can also set up a filter on your Gmail to actually have messages from a particular subject line or part of a subject line go into a folder uh, and out of the inbox automatically when it comes in. Um, you could probably Google that, and there's a lot of instructions on that. But uh, that's another way to deal with it. I have a big fear of missing something if I do that. So I cannot. I tried, and it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, um, I actually have any mentions go to my cell phone um, or have any mentions go to my iPad uh, so that I don't miss things that are pertinent to, to me. And then if I'm just going through the community uh, into the, the Brave New Year community, I can really scan the posts. And I do it about once a day. I just kind of scroll all the way through them and just sort of see what the topics are. Um, and that's really what's important to me. It's not necessarily everybody else's posts out there unless I'm listening for something particular, in which case I would use the search function. Mm -hmm. Good points, good tips. Um, I just, I keep my eye on the little red box. That's it. I mean, but I don't get email. When, I, when we first started the Facebook group and Gmail, both of them, like, wow, blew up everything. So I turned off mm -hmm. notifications on both of them. So um, just, I mean, Facebook, I just go in and check the Facebook group for their actions and stuff in there. But... They make me mad, so I go back to So can I ask a question along those lines? Yes. In that regard, as far as, um, so when I first joined and started with you all, there was all these different conversations going on, and I didn't know, it wasn't for a lack of interest, I just didn't know where to, like, where to come, like, you know, pop in, and so I don't know if it was, if it's five days old or six days old, does it just, I mean, I guess you're talking about notifications, so as long as I do the plus, Tanya or plus Chris or plus Soul, you all will get that regardless of its how old it is. Yes, okay. that's how that works. Uh huh. Um, and it doesn't matter. I mean, if you see something in there and you haven't been in in you know a week and a half, and you you pop in and see you know a conversation that's not being continued, but you still have something con to contribute, you know, don't let your fear of being improper yeah. stop you from from commenting. We hear about being brave. Okay. Yeah. So, you have to you have to put your two cents worth in if you see it necessary. Okay, awesome. So, but don't worry about that. Don't worry about the age thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Simon. Uh, yeah, I just had a little question about um, how does uh, how, how does everybody feel about the? Um, I mean, I have, a, I have this thing about Facebook, and I think a lot of people have a thing about Facebook about you know how they keep changing the rules and uh, the whole security thing, the whole privacy thing, just. It's, it's almost impossible to keep up with uh, with what changes they make. And I've got to the point now where I actually uh, almost very rarely post on Facebook. Uh, except for the Brave group, I'm, I'm interacting a little bit on, on Facebook with the, with the Brave group because it's a very specific thing and it's a lock thing. So, uh, But generally for the rest of Facebook, I, I've pretty much abandoned it. Um, uh, whereas I don't feel that fear with Google Plus, I haven't come across anything that's scary for me with Google Plus. Now maybe that's just my own ignorance. Uh, has anybody had any, you know, uh, have any views on that? Do they feel safer in Google Plus? Uh, more control over Google Plus? I think you're ahead Facebook? of the curve on than most people who are still uh, actively participating in Facebook. I do think that it feels a bit safer in Google Plus as well. Um, I think that's an astute observation. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think uh, I think it's just a matter of time before uh, Facebook alienates enough people that it really starts having an effect on them. Um, I just find Google Plus to be a much more a much more well thought out application. It, it you can things make sense in there and it looks a whole lot nicer. And I do feel like I have a lot more control. I think it's certainly, I mean, with, with Google Plus, what I, I find remarkable about Google Plus is just how you can uh, really beautifully track uh, certain conversations. You know, for example, I, I've set up a, a very specific um, search social uh, content group. Uh, you know, none of these guys are going to follow me back. I'm just too small, <laughs> too insignificant at this point. But I've set up, there's about 20 people in there, and I can, I can track that so perfectly every day. And, and and watch that stuff. We, and, and to do the same sort of thing on, on, on Facebook, it's just so unwieldy. Um, and and I can set up multiple uh, views like this. It's a little bit like in using you know a Hootsuit or something like that with Twitter. But with fa with with G Plus, it just seems so much easier to track very precisely what's going on, what you're really interested in, and set up your own um, you know key key interests and track them beautifully, and then share. 
you know, bits and pieces uh, laterally and horizontally. So, uh, but the security thing is it's not a little security issue. It's really a privacy thing because uh, you know I, I don't want to share everything, you know, my private family stuff with you know the universe. Um, and I just find I have found, in fact, stuff's been shared. And when you look back down through the history and think, yeah, well, when I started that, that wasn't able to be shared. But then they changed the rules, and suddenly they're sharing it uh, in Facebook. That is, and I haven't found that in Google Plus yet. Hopefully, never. Yeah, I'm not big on the Facebook uh, sharing thing, but I have um, two different accounts. I have one for my personal business and or one for my personal stuff and one for my business and I don't have my family on my personal business I mean my personal yeah on my business page I don't have my family listed so they don't they don't get into anything and they don't they can't share whatever and I can't share whatever for them but I, not that it makes it that much safer but at least I know whatever is being shared on my business stuff is public content and I'm not going to go in there and you know talk about what I have for breakfast or whatever Although you might see my pictures, so I don't know. Um, but that's uh, it's a good observation, and I was really, really hesitant with Google Plus um, until the community started, and now that they've just you know sort of blossomed and made everything so much cleaner than Facebook, that's why I really sort of gravitated away from from Facebook to G Plus. Oh, I will um, say, I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead, Chris. Yeah, Chris Morgan, um, his new course. Write your book already is exclusively on Google Plus. It's not on Facebook. So, oh, really? Yeah. So that's a nice shift. I think he's seeing the value of it as well, and um, I think more and more. Uh, I think future courses he'll probably shift most of the a majority of them over to Google Plus. Yeah, I think I think he's doing his health community only on Google Plus. Also. Mm. Ooh, do you like that book, Simon? Oh. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, that's that's Chris's book on, on, on G+. And I, I actually found it unusual that a – well, no, actually, no. Uh, it makes sense that he started Brave exclusively in Facebook um, because I guess the more people are there for that type of thing. But, it, yeah, it seems logical that he would choose G+, certainly from what he says in the book. And, yeah, no, so it's, it is a great book. Um, and... Um, uh, sorry, I was lost my track of thought there. But yeah, um, what Chris was saying about the writing, I haven't signed up for the writing course, but uh, the writing a book course. But it would be perfect uh, for that that type of you know course uh, lockdown thing. You've got so many function, so many great functions. You know, the the hangouts alone are fantastic to be able to share and and network and group think and brainstorm and all of that sort of stuff. Well, the Google Plus hadn't introduced communities when he had started the Brave New Year too, so that was um, right. That was that sort of came as soon as he did Brave New Year. We were oh, like, okay. oh wait, you know what? We're gonna go over there. <laughs> yeah. So we abandoned ship. So. <laughs> um, any other questions, Saul? I know you said you have a bunch of them. I do. Uh, I guess uh, one of the things I'm curious about is, in your perception, I, I guess this Brave New Group, Brave New Year group, started about six weeks ago or something like that. Uh, it seemed to me, uh, reading back on Chris's newsletters, it, I heard about it maybe at the end of November, and, and I joined mid-January. So, uh, are the are people participating in both Facebook and Google Plus, or some people are just doing Google Plus, and other people are just doing Facebook? In your perception, and I'm just curious. It looked like there's 94 users in Google Plus and about the same amount in Facebook. Um, I would have thought that a guy like Chris, and I, I'm, I had known him really from afar until this group, and I'm very impressed with how uh, much he's participating in this and what a nice guy he uh, has come across to be. Uh, but I would have thought like a course like this with an affordable price point would have had like a thousand people and, and, and I'm so is it is it really only about a hundred people right now, and are is it uh, a choice is to go Facebook or Google Plus and or both? How does that appear to you guys? Sorry, um, I think uh, that mostly everybody either likes Facebook or they like Google Plus. I stay out of Facebook just because I'm too lazy to log into a second account. Um, and Google Plus is always open because I'm always in my email, so I'm just a lazy. Uh, community member. Um, and as far as uh, 
<laughs> they can. You, every, you, <laughs> you guys are very kind. <laughs> um, it, you can do either one. You can do both. I, I try either. I try to stay out of um, the Facebook uh, group too because I don't want to cross post too much because I do know that there are the same people over there that that are over here and if they want to, you know, they they can come over and see it at the same time. You know, I don't want to be uh, intrusive, but I know that there are people that do post in both places. Like I think Walter does, and there might be 94 people in the group, or there might be. I, I guess there was. I thought there was like 150 or close to. 100. Yeah, it's 135 in the in the Facebook group. Okay, that's what I, I was thinking. It was uh, more, but it's uh, at the same time, um, the holy cow. <laughs> my train of thought just left for me. <laughs> I forgot my ticket. Um, that I'm just go right ahead. <laughs> well, I think that there's a lot of opportunity still for people to join that group, um, even though it may look like a small demographic. Uh, this is still rather in its infancy, in my opinion, and I think that there's still. I mean, I, I joined uh, the blog topics master group when it first launched. And maybe, you know, there was maybe 40, 50 people in there, and now it's blown up. So I think, you know, the life cycle, we're still in the infancy stage with the life cycle on that. That's mm -hmm. kind of what I think. Um, in terms of going back and forth, I'm right there with you. Um, I'm a pretty lazy person, and I don't really like uh, Facebook as much. I've really abandoned ship on that as well. So, you know, my vote is for uh, Google+, and that's why I'm here. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I usually uh, any any anything new I don't cross post. I'll just post it on Google Plus. Uh, I'll often comment on on things that I see in in Facebook. I, I'm in Facebook for other reasons, so I'll just pop into the Brave group and and comment on things if if I feel feel like it. Um, the other thing about the the course in general is I get the feeling that with the name Brave New Year. That a lot of people focused on the new year part of it, and, yeah. and I, I I hope that that it does continue to pick up new members, even though it's getting farther and farther from the new year. I think um, he mentioned something about other brave projects, mm -hmm. so I'm guessing that he's probably going to do a, a revamp of this, and um, he'll probably relaunch as just a brave uh, project, where we probably I don't think we'll have to you know get in again. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's just gonna just do it as remarket it as a more uh, yearly kind of thing rather than a, a special occasion kind of launch. So and that's my two cents. And you had Greg, you had pro, um, questions about for business use for this Google Plus thing that you said you wanted to ask. Yeah, um, one of the things that um, that came up with the group that I'm working with right now is they really like the idea of Hangouts on Air. But how would the audience, as opposed to the participants, um, make any questions known? Or you know, since they're not they're not part of the group chat, have you um, have you done anything where the the larger audience has any input? Yeah, you can. Um, they can ask questions through the um, Google Plus stream if they're watching through the stream. Um, you would have if they wanted to monitor uh, the comments on the the stream and the post or the post mm -hmm. in the stream, then they could address questions that way. So you so you would direct people to the the stream of the person who created the hangout. Yes, and uh, wait a minute. Okay, if the if the business okay the business the people are in they should be in the same circle. I guess well, they're going to once vote. you once you start the on air part, then it, it then it automatically becomes public. Right, it's public, but they may not. I mean, they could. I guess they could find it through going through the hangout um, option, and they could search the hangouts that way. Um, well, but because yeah, they're we want to we would want to direct them someplace ahead right. of time. Ideally, I'm trying to think because I know that it shows up in YouTube, but you don't want to ask comments on YouTube. I mean, ask questions through the YouTube. Yeah, I don't want to monitor two different places. So Chris, um, got, Chris has got a suggestion here. For yeah, I see that first tab. Customize your preferences. Oh. The time. Sorry, that was from Melissa. Oh, from Melissa. Sorry. <laughs> oh. We're intruding on your conversation. <laughs> but, I mean, so what it sounds like, uh, Tanya, is that you could, and I mean, it's basically you're in Google Plus with the Hangout. 
plus you're also watching the stream outside, so you kind of have to have two browser windows open. Is that where right? You have somebody. You have somebody on the team that's right. watching right. the comments, where you would just have a moderator dealing with the um, with the the hangout, and then you could have somebody on the team watching the comments, and they could post that in the chat, where the moderator could address that way. Right, and and then prior to the hangout, when you when you're publicizing it. You would you would I, then direct people to the the page either of either a business page or or a profile. Yes, through the pro yes through the profile of the um, business who's holding the um the the hangout. Okay. All right. Well, we're gonna get our first chance to try this out this afternoon. Are you? Uh, yeah. Um, we're just kind of doing a, a a trial run and and. Uh, an introduction to you know, we're trying to use this to promote Google Plus and other social media to the local community, the local business community. So we're we're inviting that community to come and and watch the hangout on air. And about four or five of us are going to be talking about something. <laughs> something. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. I was just going to say I, I actually use. The Hangouts now for client meetings. Yeah, I've done that. Um, really your briefings and stuff like that. I I try to minimize travel uh, as much as possible. So now uh, my clients are really comfortable with just setting up um, a Google Hangout and we, we discuss some content and issues and away we go and make decisions and whatnot. And it's kind of reduced my travel, um, you know, by about eighty percent. No doubt, it's an excellent tool. That's for it's sure. It's fantastic. It, it used to use Skype, but the problem with Skype was they were quite limited, and it was always breaking down, uh, uh, freezing, and so forth. Um, uh, here comes the family. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, can you give me the, Sorry. the computer? Sorry. You're fine. Hi. <laughs> hello, hello. It's my lovely wife. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry. Uh, any other questions, Greg, about the business? No, I think that that I've got a pretty. I thought that's what, what the way it would work, and so I'm I'm glad to hear that I was on the right track. Um, one other comment that I would just make uh, from having done a couple of webinars is that it it really does help to designate another person to handle those comments rather than the person who's actually talking. True, mm. one place to monitor. Yeah. No. Anybody else? Saul, Simon, Melissa, Chris. I have uh, another sort of generalized question for you guys. Uh, how do you? What do you? What do you use for a strategy so that you're not on this stuff all the time? Like, how do you make sure you prioritize content creation time and working on your business time uh, between Facebook and which is which? I'm active on Facebook, sort of, and. G plus is new to me. I really haven't been very active on Twitter, but I, I know you could just spend all your time on this stuff. And I've heard generally that's not a good idea to spend all your time on this stuff. I'm curious how you guys come up have come up with a strategy for staying in touch with people, using it you know, efficaciously, but not letting it get in the way of getting stuff done and creating stuff and and you know getting yourself out there. Who would like to feel that? Go ahead. Why don't you start? I, I was just going to say, turn it off. Um, <laughs> I, I, uh, I I try, not necessarily very successfully, but I do try to to set three times a day. Um, that's the sort of volume I need to to run my business. Three times a day, I turn it on, turn it off. Uh, that's everything. Like you know, all the connections except the email because I have clients call in. But with social media and so forth, I turn the stuff off. Uh, uh, and three times a day, I plug in and I dedicate a set amount of time. Um, and, and the first, obviously, I scan everything. I pick out the crucial, you know, you know, client-based things that I need to respond to. Uh, and then I'll go on to uh, things that are very key to to business. And then I'll also dedicate a little bit of time to some general kind of just connecting and saying hi to people, letting people know that you're alive and you're a human being, and not just a you know a business machine. Um, but, but yeah, set set period of time early in the morning. Uh, I live in uh, I live in Europe, and my clients are all over the world. So I actually have those three times because I have three different 
time frames, uh, three different continental areas that I'm working with. So, you know, it just depends on how much time you need to deal with your clients. But I said about 15 minutes for each three, three, two, three periods uh, that I kind of churn through and, and, and do something. And the bottom line is I have to accept that I can't touch everything that comes through. I can't respond to everybody's uh, you know, tweets or something like that. But I try to 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 give everybody a fair go um, with that. Ex except obviously, you know, clients and client questions get priority always. So I'm just going to offer a few more. Um, I think those are really great, Simon. And just to piggyback on what you're saying, for me, um, it's a couple things. One is um, in Rob Hatch's course, "Work Like You're on Vacation." One of the key components of that is to really designate your top three priorities for the day and really focus on those. And sometimes social media is a focus, sometimes it isn't. Chris Brogan has a really wonderful video on his YouTube channel on how he does time mapping. Um, I use it when I teach my uh, time management classes. And what that is is making blocks of time in your normal day to deal with things like social media or other priorities and really block that time off on your schedule. Um, I also think that, just like Simon was alluding to, uh, having different media on different days really works for me. So, for example, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'll do maybe a Facebook touch for about 30 minutes. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, it's definitely Twitter. Um, Twitter tends to be more active for me on the weekends anyway, and I connect with a lot of my, uh, my uh, colleagues there. Um, so just having a, a strategy in that way of where you're going to hit those touch points. And I love, love, love your idea, Simon. And one of the things I do that's so effective is I turn off my Wi-Fi <laughs> yeah. so that I have to work. <laughs> I, I, I think that, I think that people actually. Uh, I find that it, when I started out, and my, my my clients, I used to say to my client, "Yeah, I, I give you a 30, 30 minute uh, response time guaranteed," uh, and that was a bit naive at the time. It was okay at the time because there weren't so many clients. But as time goes on and you start to get a lot of clients, you You've got to set rules, and I, and I like what Mitch was saying today. You know, just say no. Learn how to say no uh, in many different ways. Um, politely say no, but no for a strategic reason. And in the end, do your clients or whoever, whoever your audience is, whether it's be in non 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 profit, uh, whatever sector you're in, eventually the people who really matter to to your activity are actually going to respect that and. They're going to see that you're you are taking time, and uh, as Sol was saying, taking time to make the content, the real content, the real value, uh, rather than just kind of flitting around. And it's so easy, it's so addictive. It's you know, it's God. I wish I could do the same thing with my coffee drinking. Oh my God, it's just not three times a day. <laughs> <laughs> I am not so um, restrictive in my use, and you will see that because you know my name is all over the place on <laughs> the plus. I don't uh, I don't take time and. I don't uh, be judgmental about where I'm going to post my time or where I'm going to spend my time. I just go in there and I talk because that's what I do and I like to. Um, but uh, the best thing that I've found for me to do is just to go in there with a time frame, I mean, uh, a focus in my head, what my goal is, and with a time frame in mind. And in, um, if I can limit myself, ideally I'm limiting myself to 15 minutes. That's more than enough time to um, get into everywhere and just kind of scroll through and answer where you need to. That's where the, the plus one button comes in handy and the like button. So, you know, you can just go say, yay, I'm here, I'm hearing you, and good job, and you don't have to type anything. Um, but as far as the content, content comes first unless you're a client searching first. So in which case you can justify, but you need, but going in there with the idea that you're going to search for clients or you're going to search for people to make contact with that could eventually turn out to be clients should be your main focus, not, um, not just to go in and, and, and uh, just be supportive as much as you know, we'd love to be able to do that. There's one other thing, Sol. You, you, I don't know if you already do this, but um, you know, I have a set uh, amount of content that I actually do set up on automatic publication you know, using Hootsuite, for example. Uh, there's just stuff that you you can share that you set up the times that you want to send it out there and and then you follow up later on at one of those touch points uh, to to kind of personalize it or to uh, or, 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 or to follow up with a comment or something about that but you know probably depends on who the client is or, or what my strategy is for the week there could be you know anything up to 80 percent sometimes of stuff that's just automatically programmed in the morning to go out through the day 
Uh, but I always, when I do that, I always make sure that at some point during the day I go back in and I see that nobody has responded to that or somebody has responded to that and then I make sure that there's a personal touch added if there is a, you know, if, if, if the fish is bitten on that, that particular piece of uh, content that you've set out. Mm -hmm. And uh, Simon, if I may ask, is that when you use Hootsuite that in that way, you're, you're not able to differentiate differentiate the content in any way between, say, what gets on Facebook or Twitter or the, this week works with G plus two now, right? Or yes. Now. Yeah. So yeah, you, can, you can set it up for, for publication, yeah. Do you think that's a good strategy to have the same identical content going on different platforms like Twitter and Facebook or well you can actually you actually select where it gets published um, uh, no I don't I personally don't think it's good to publish the same exactly the same content on every platform um, uh, uh, you know but if you if you know your content quite well you can just you know you can put out uh, the same piece of content with a different tagline three or four different taglines uh, uh, you just mix up the keywords a bit and so forth and so on. And uh, um, you, you, the reason I, I stress that you've got to not rely on that. I mean, there are a lot of people out there I know. I've got clients who just say, can't we just you know put 100% automatic at the beginning of the week and let the thing... Oh, I think that defeats the purpose of what this is all about. Personally, I think this, and business-wise, this is about conversations, it's about relationships. It's not about you know spitting out push junk um, and so you've got to be there but um, you, know, you, you can have a certain amount that's automated. Yeah one of the problems that I've seen with um, with sharing from other applications um, is that it, it it doesn't end up looking the way I want it to. Uh, for instance if I'm if I'm on um, my phone and I want to share something on Facebook a, a link on on Facebook I always want the image from that link to show up in my share and it rarely does. It seems like you have to be on the Facebook application for that to happen. So I end up spending the time to post one thing at a time in different places which is which seems pretty inefficient but it's the only way to get it to look the way I want. Uh, you said that was through Hootsuite that it doesn't always show up? Uh, no, actually through the through the Facebook mobile app, it doesn't show up. Um, through the mobile app, hmm. I don't know. Hmm. I know that I was having an issue with Hootsuite um, Facebook, and I had to like actually take that uh, permission off and put it back in again for the image to show up in Facebook. So I don't know about why it would do, not do work. With so them. Hootsuite does does let you put a link on there, and it gives you the the excerpt and the and the uh -huh. image. I I I've only used uh, TweetDeck for. For that kind of thing, so maybe I need to take a look at Hootsuite. Yeah, I don't, I don't use uh, TweetDeck. I use Hootsuite, and I haven't had it. And actually, I haven't even tried to use it for Google Plus. But since uh, Instagram uh, has bombarded my phone, I haven't used anything except Instagram. <laughs> so, and I've shared it to my Facebook and Twitter profiles as I do, as I do it there. So. Um, Melissa, do you have any other questions since you seem to be kind of like lost since we've gone into business conversation and you know you kind of got here because you just want to know how to work this thing. I know I want to know how to drive this thing. Um, no, I think this is good and I'm just taking some notes is so as I kind of do my baby steps and then uh, we'll be able to ask other questions like the Hootsuite or the Tweet Deck or the all that stuff that I'm not familiar with at the moment, but that's okay. So this is good, and it's good practice for me. It's really, it's been fun, and you all have been um, just amazingly supportive and so sweet in your, you know, even as we're typing, we're not even uh, being able to have that human interaction, and it's been just, it kind of reinstates my faith a little bit because I'm not a huge Facebook fan, and so um, this is fun for me. So thank you all. I really appreciate it. Thank you, and thank you for just, spurring this whole conversation. Yeah. Well, and thanks just, just, for organizing. Sorry, I was just going to say for Melissa, mm -hmm. just to say, you know, like uh, I actually have two clients that are non-governmental organizations, or non-profit organizations, sorry, and uh, they, they're really active uh, with social media. They've become, you know, they're using it to to get their story out and to um, 
to 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 generate you know donations and that sort of stuff. You know, huh. it's, uh, and, and there are a lot of non-governmental organisations, uh, charities, and social groups, and that's why I mentioned Andy. It's Andy White, isn't it? I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, he, he he's he's just used. Oh, I, she's still, she's still <laughs> I know. Oh, hold on. Here we go. I had to get the door. I'm sorry, you all. Yeah, I was just going to say, Andy. Andy might be a nice guy to to connect with in your circles to to talk about how he's doing it because he's working in uh, social uh, grant raising for some really interesting social projects. Yeah, really, really interesting stuff, and he seems like a really great guy. So yeah, yeah I connect with Not with him. Nonprofits seem to really, really maximize social media because people are really looking for reasons to um, be sociable and to be charitable with each other and to spread good news and, and that kind of thing. So social media is a real big boost for um, nonprofits, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we, we are coming up on uh, 2.30 now and uh, my time. I'm going to have to go and get my little ones. So uh, does anybody have any other questions before we close? I would just like to chime in and say that I did buy Guy Kawasaki's book, What the Plus, last night. It's 99 cents, and I fully intend to read Chris's book, too, particularly because I just read The Impact Equation, and it was great, he and Julian's book. But uh, particularly for you, Melissa, I've, I've read 30% of Guy, Guy's book, and it's great, and it, it's written for somebody who is brand new to Google Plus, so it, it's all in there. And you still have to use it to get comfortable with it, but uh, I think it's a good pickup. And uh, I was—I've been reading his uh, APE Art Artisanal Publishing and Entre Entrepreneurial Ape, Ape, the book. And, and Chris, I know you're taking—I think Chris that's taking the book course. I highly recommend Guy's book on uh, Ape, the um, artisanal publishing book. It's—I hadn't really spent any time with Guy Kawasaki before, but I'm very impressed with. The way he's coming across in his book. So, but the the what the plus book is great for this stuff. So I, I yeah, I, I read I read that one too, and and I I liked it. And it, just because it was written so much after Chris's book, there's a lot more. Uh, it, it's much more up to date because Google Plus adds new features weekly. Yeah. Mm. Well, thank you. Well, I'm gonna close this thing up and. If you have any other questions, anybody, um, we can always do this again, or we can chime in with some more questions on the Google Plus group. Um, and in the meantime, it's been lovely talking with all of you. I do appreciate it. Yeah. And we'll Thanks. talk again soon. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Sorry. Chris, Thanks. Chris, Thank would you, you be able to hang on just two seconds? Sure. I'm going to yeah. end the broadcast, and I'll leave you guys on. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Tammy.